So this is a, a obviously a productive spot already. Other people have already been here and we're seeing a ton of very tiny olivine crystals. And if there's a little bit of wind at that temperature, it just like cuts right through your clothing. Changes it real fast. Yeah. Okay. There's a trestle here. I think we can get under it. We'll see if we can. I would hate to get stuck like halfway under there. I would too. I hate it when that happens. <laughs> just let some air out of the tires. That's a good idea. Bill and I got excited about exploring Dish Hill after watching the YouTube video by a geologist named Joseph Wright. During his expedition around the massive cinder cone, Wright found an incredible peridot crystal. And thanks to my friend Jamie of the Desert Girls, we obtained the exact location of that deposit. It's important to mention that peridot, sometimes called chrysolite, is gem quality olivine. Peridot is formed deep inside the Earth's mantle and is carried to the surface by magma during volcanic eruptions. Bill and I are just uh, packing our gear. We're going to head up to a shoulder on the uh, south side of Dish Hill. We have been led to believe that there is olivine in crystal form. So I got water, I got Gatorade, I got the shovel, a little bit of food, I got the mini drone. Can you, is there anything else we need? Do you know how to use this? Yeah, <laughs> I do. I'm really good at it. All right, Bill and I are left the truck, got all our mining gear, and we're headed up to explore the abandoned Trojan mine. I told Bill that I thought it was a gypsum mine from what I had read. However, he pointed out that the hard rock that we're finding outside of this doesn't look anything at all like gypsum. And we're not seeing big piles of white gypsum-like uh, tailings either. What are you seeing down there, Bill? Well, there's some big chunks of timber coming out of the earth down here. It's hard to tell if this was part of the old support, but it looks like it goes back in there. Of course, look at all the, maybe it was some sort of sifter or something because there's all kinds of debris on the top of it, you know? Right, maybe it all collapsed, filled it in with a bulldozer to keep people out. Look at all the tiny little green crystals here. There's just thousands of them. So this is a, a obviously a productive spot already. Other people have already been here and we're seeing a ton of very tiny olivine crystals almost completely encapsulating this rock right here. Obviously, people are looking for the larger gem quality peridot. I'm just happy that we found the olivine. So, no crystals in there. But I think you're right. I think that's how the, the gemstones are found, is by breaking the boulders manually. There's another one. Now, that looks like a geode almost right there inside so it's hard to see from this distance but half of this dirt is covered with beautiful green crystals they're probably a tenth of a carat each this is an example of a, a xenolith uh, and you, by telling it you can see that around it is basalt what happens commonly is that 
The basalt, is, if it erupts from very great depth, it'll actually tear off chunks or bring up pieces of the deeper, older mantle, which this is part of. So this is an olivine-based cluster. The, there are examples of these throughout various volcanoes in the American Southwest, all the way to Arizona, uh, Utah, uh, and parts of California.